QuickBooks Online 2022 Month 1 Reports. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with our 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. And the business view as compared to the accounting view. If you wanted to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top and then going to the switch to the accounting view on down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views as we go either here or by jumping on over to the sample company, which is currently in the accounting view. Going back then to our Get Great Guitars, going to open up a few tabs up top, right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating that tab back to the tab to the left right clicking on it again and duplicating it again back to the tab to the left right clicking another time and duplicating again as that is thinking we're going to jump on back over to the sample company to note where the reports are located in the in the accounting view which is right here on the left hand side reports and if we jump back on over to the business view, we're currently in the second tab. The reports are going to be in the business section on the left-hand side. We're now going to be looking at the reports both to review the reports at the end of the first month of data input, the section that we have been working on here. So you can kind of review your numbers, the financial statements in essence being the end uh, result or the end product of the data input in general. We'll look at the balance sheet and the income statement, of course, the major two financial statement reports. And then we'll also look at a trial balance and we'll then look at a transaction list as well so that we can then have the transaction list which will give us the detail of what we have done through this time frame. If your balance sheet and income statement or trial balance does not tie out to what we have, the transaction detail list can be useful to kind of tick and tie out each of the transactions, which will be the difference from if you started at the same point at the end of the last section with the beginning balances and then entered the data, we should be at the same point at the end with regards to our ending balances on balance sheet and income statement. We also just want to think about how we would group these reports together when we're giving them to say a client at the end of a period. So I'm going to go into the reports. Let's go into the reports here. And we're going to go into the balance sheet. I was already in the report, so I started rambling. I apologize. I'm going to close up the hamburger up. <music> top, we're going to go up top and do the range change from 010122 to 123122 and run it. And then let's go to the next tab on over. Let's go then to the business view on the left. We're in the reports. And then I'm going to close up the hamburger choose the profit and loss report do the range change up top we're going to go from 010122 to 123122 and run that one and then i'm going to go to the tab to the right and we're going to go to the business overview again this time let's take a look at our uh, trial balance going to the reports on the left hand side and let's do that by typing in trial balance trial balance and so there we have it. Let's close up the hamburger. Let's do the range change from 010122 to 123122 and run that one. And let's do one more. I'm going to open one more tab and just open them all up. And then we'll start doing some editing on them. Right clicking on the tab up top, duplicating again. This one's going to be the transaction detail report, a report we might not be giving to clients possibly but one which can be quite useful to determine what has been done, possibly could be used for billing purposes as well. So we're in the reports again. You could type in up top, but let's actually look this one up because we haven't seen it too often. So I'm gonna go all the way down to the accounting area. So we're gonna go down to the accounting area, which is for my accountant. It's down here somewhere, transaction at list by date. That's the one we want. You could also type it up top once you get used to it transaction list by date is the one we want and so we're going to say okay picking it up and we can do the range change on it let's just make that more defined from 010122 to 0131 and then run that report so these are going to be our 
our major statements that we will be taking a look at, the balance sheet and the income statement are going to be the end results. The trial balance, in essence, being the balance sheet on top of the income statements without the subtotals. Great report for checking the numbers. And then the transaction list by date being the report that's going to give us the detail of what has happened from the last balance sheet point as after we entered the beginning balances to after we entered all these transactions. Let's go back to the balance sheet. Let's do some formatting to it. I'm actually going to change the date range. Let's make them all at the end of January 31st. The numbers shouldn't change because we haven't done anything after that point, but that'll be useful, of course, for the date range on the report. 013122. Let's run it. And then let's then go up top and do some customization. Imagining we're going to be providing this report to a third party. So I'm going to customize the report. I'm going to take off the pennies and let's go down to the filters uh, down below or to the header and footer. Let's go to and take off the date prepared, time prepared and report basis as has generally been our custom. So I'm going to say, uh, OK, let's show the negative numbers as red and then let's put them in brackets as well. I believe that has been our custom as well. Run that report, holding control down, scrolling up just a bit. And so this is what we have thus far with regards to the balance sheet at this point in time. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and export this as a PDF and then we'll export it as an Excel document later. So right now I want to imagine we're going to give it to a client or supervisor and I want to put them all into one zipped file. So in other words, I could email it, but then I would be emailing three reports, which would be a bit tedious. We could then print them if we wanted to print them. We can export them as a PDF file or as an Excel file. Excel can also be used to put all these reports into one PDF file. Also remember that you have that other option of creating like a custom report. That's over here in the uh, business area and then in your reports area here. And then if we go into the management reports, you could possibly put them into and create your management reports. I'm not going to go into that again as well. Uh, but just remember that is another option that you could do to provide these reports to a supervisor or to a client. We're typically going to be thinking client here. So I'm going to export it as a PDF. And so this is what it looks like. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and just save it as a PDF. It's going to then populate down below. I'm going to do the old dragging and dropping thing. So I'm going to go into month one. This is my month one stuff. And then I'm going to just drag it in here. I'm going to do the old drag and drop. I'm going to grab it, grab it right by the hair and drag it. Ah, and then drop it. Ah, and it falls into the pit of the folder right here. And then we're going to go to the extra large icon. So then it looks good. The PDF doesn't have any hair. What are you talking about? I grabbed it by its red belt, the PDF belt, and then dragged it. Okay. So then we're going to go to the tab to the right. Let's look at the profit and loss report. Let's do some editing. Let's end this one again at 013122, running that one. And then we could go up top and do some customizations to it. Let's do the, the, um, the sense. Let's go without sense. Let's make the bracketed numbers. Let's show them as red. And then scrolling down, let's do the headers and footers. Let's switch it up a bit, calling it an income statement. Let's call it an income statement just for some switching of it up. We're going to get rid of the date, the time, the report basis, and then run it. So there we have it. This is what we have here. Now note that these are not the only two formats, of course, that we can create of these reports. We could also create, you know, a vertical analysis report. And once we have multiple periods, as we'll do at the end of the next time, we can also do the comparative or horizontal analysis type of report. So remember, you can have a whole lot of reports just with a basic balance sheet and income statement that you might be then providing to a, a client. So I won't go into that in detail here, but just rem remember you want to customize what you think would be best for reporting purposes to your end clients. And that could include vertical analysis, horizontal analysis, comparing month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year, and so on. So let's go up top and let's print this one out. So I'm going to say, let's export this to the PDF as well. So let's do the PDF. 
and I'm gonna say let's save as a PDF and then I'm gonna drag and drop it again dragging and dropping it gonna grab it by that red PDF belt drag it over here I got a really strong pointer finger on the left click so I can drag it even though it's pretty heavy it's a pretty heavy report but I dragged it over there and there it is there's the income statement and then we're gonna go back on over let's do the let's do the next one over here let's pick up then the trial balance which is gonna be the balance sheet on top of the income statement and let's do the end change here from 0101 uh, let's do it 013122 so the end of the month running that customization up top let's do some customization and say that we're going to say this is going to be sense without sense red and bracketed numbers on the negatives and on the header and footer we'll get rid of the date the time and the report basis let's go ahead and run that one and so if we look down here this is where we stand in terms of the trial balance the trial balance having these two legs the debit leg and the credit leg on the left and the right and so this is just balance sheet on top of the income statement great report for checking your numbers and uh, and seeing where we are at so we're going to then let's export that one as a pdf export pdf save it as a pdf opening up our our folder so we can drag it and drop it drag and drop drag it and drop it and so there we've got that one and then we've got the one more which is going to be the transaction list by date holding control scrolling down just a bit now this one just note on this one this is the one that you're going to want to the new report we haven't really seen and remember what it in essence is doing is listing all the transactions that we have giving us the transaction type listing them of course by date so it's similar to a transaction detail report when you drill down on something like the cash account which in essence takes you to a GL account which is basically you know listing out the transactions for that particular account by date but this is listing all transactions by date and it's given the transaction type over here remember there are at least two accounts affected for each transaction so if it has those two accounts it'll it'll give you the cash account which is the primary account driven by the transaction type for example a deposit you primarily primarily think of as the checking account or cash account and then it'll show the other account that is split into that is impacted if there is only one other account if there's multiple accounts that are affected that's when it gives you the split item down here so this should give us a pretty good idea if you if you were able to actually tick and tie i know it's a tedious process because there's a lot of data for this uh, problem but you can kind of tick and tie off what has happened on your end versus what's happened over here if there's something on your books well first of all if there's a difference of any kind you probably especially if there's something on our books that is not on your books then you probably want to widen the date range because it might be a date issue in which case you could just drill down on that that item which is out of date possibly in a more current date if you're working this practice problem at a later date given the fact that when you enter data input it'll try to default to the current date and then you can drill down onto it to the source document change the date and work forward with the practice problem in that way if there's something that is on uh, your report but it's not on this report it's possible it's a duplicate or an error so you can either change it doing the same process drilling down on it making any changes you need or you can simply delete it by going into it and deleting the transaction something you want to be careful of in practice in actual practice not in our practice problem deleting something that is because you know you want you don't really you want to be careful of deleting anything but in the practice problem it could be something that you can you can do to, to work in testing us out here so this is what we have you could tick and tie these off and it, look at the dollar amount and then you also can look at basically the transaction type on the right hand side and the split account so that's going to be the activity I'll go through it fairly slowly I'll try to print this out so you have a copy of it as well so that uh, that you can take a look at it also note that this report might be useful for billing purposes as well because you might decide to bill a client based on how many transactions you have done 
And this report, you could just count the transactions and say, well, if you're within this range of transactions, this is what I'm going to be billing you for. And you can actually give them this report as evidence. You might even export it to Excel, do a count so that you don't have to physically count every line. You can export it to Excel and do a function to count the lines. And then uh, that'll be a lot easier uh, of a billing process and a little bit more concrete feeling sometimes as well. So let's go back up top. And did I customize this thing yet? Did I customize it? I feel like there's a footer. I wanted to take the footers off. Get rid of the date and the time on the footer. And there's that. Let's get rid of the pennies. Eh, do we need pennies? Let's keep the pennies on this one. I'll do some brackets and the red numbers. And then run it. So there is that. There it is. And let's export this one. So let's do some exportation to the PDF export to the pdf and then we're just going to save it as a pdf and then we're going to drag and drop it dragging and dropping grabbing it with my left finger and pulling it over dragging it over and dropping it and then we're going to go back on over so that's what we have thus far we also might want to memorize these reports if these are the type of reports we want to have memorized so you might go into each of these for example and just say we're going to save the customization for example on the balance sheet save the customization i'm going to make a couple groups i'm going to call this the month end month end reports and i'm going to say this is the balance sheet i'm going to call this the number one report maybe number one report balance sheet report it's going to be a new group in month end report saving it and then the next one on over let's memorize or or save the customization on this one income statement number two report income statement in my month end <coughs> reports and save that one and then my number three report is the trial balance remembering that the trial balance is probably not a report that we're going to give as much to an external user possibly more likely to give it to someone like a supervisor uh, however it is a great internal report but i'm going to save the customization here and i'm going to say this is number three report and put that into our month one or month end reports and uno vase moss one more time on the transaction list by date saving the customization let's call it number four and then this one's going to go into the month end reports and we will save that one too if i go back to the first tab here we can then go into our reports and we can we can say if i went to my customize reports here now we've got these reports memorized so in the following month we can simply open them up, although we might do some editing in the second month in terms of making a slightly different reports so for some comparative reports, but we can open these ones up as well, and we can use them to then create whatever kind of formatting we would like, either saving them as PDF, emailing them, creating a management reports, or possibly using Excel to then put them all on one PDF file, which we will do next time. For now, let's see what we've done thus far. We've got these, these four reports here. Now we can attach these to one email now that we have them here, but it would probably be best if we zip them at least, that would be a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna make a new file and I'm just gonna call it, uh, I'm gonna call it financials and I'll say 013122. And then let's grab these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select all of them and then I'm gonna drag them all at one time. I've been working with my pointer finger. It's for my muscles, my dragging muscles. I'm dragging all those heavy files and dropping them, boom, one time. Didn't take any effort at all because of my practice. I'm gonna right click on it and now I'm gonna to go to sending to and let's compress it, zipping it. So now we can attach this to say an email and have one attachment which is a little nicer although there's still a lot of reports in there and if if we were to add month two reports with comparative reports you can have a lot of reports so next time we might want to put all these reports into one file which you could do with the management report remember but it's a little you know it's a little bit tedious to do that it's, it works but you can also do it by basically exporting to excel and making one pdf file so there's, there's pros and cons of those methods next time we'll export these reports to excel and then create 
uh, a PDF with all the reports using Excel and a cute PDF printer.